always try to put me down on the ground, but I really be jealous cause I'm the one in their mind. In their minds, screw up with me, boy, don't go cry. In their minds, come on at me, boy, there's a fight. In their minds. Our Sunday triple header in the Philippines Football League is about to see its third and final match here at the Rizal Memorial Football Stadium as Maharlika Tagig take on the defending champions, Kaya FC Iloilo. It is the 20th match of our season so far, and it is a big test for both teams. Kaya FC Iloilo looking to stay perfect, while Maharlika Tagig look to bounce back after facing defeat against Manila Diggers. So glad you could join us wherever you were watching the PFL. Jing Hamlang and Cam Rodriguez calling the action here today. It's been a crazy day of action at the RMS, but we've still got one more big game to go. Exactly. It's an exciting matchup between Maharlika and Kaya. As you said earlier, it's going to be a good test. It's a test for Maharlika to see how they could perform against a really competitive, the defending champions, mm -hmm. Kaya FC. And for Kaya to keep pushing their limits, um, for this game and more. Let's take a look at the updated standings as of the moment. Stanley Laguna with a big win earlier, 13-0 against Manila Monte, and that's the reason why they are at the top of the standings now with a whopping 25-goal difference. They have not conceded a single goal this season as of yet. Manila Monte at the bottom of the standings. In the meantime, Kaya FC Iloilo looking to get to nine points themselves after back-to-back -back victories, while Maharlika Tagig are in ninth place right now. They want to break into the top half of this table. If they could do it by defeating the defending champions, what a statement that would be. There have been some interesting movements in the standings as United City got a 4-1 victory over the Philippine Air Force and Davao getting another crucial victory despite being down to 10 men against Manila Diggers. That makes it back-to-back -back wins for them. It's all becoming very exciting here in the 2024 season of the PFL. Exactly, and the excitement continues on as we head on to this match. And really, we see newcomers come and test themselves and also the mainstays who have been showing their experience against the rest of the teams. And Maharlik at the gig started off with a... Nice win against Toloi in a fantastic contest, which they, they edged 3-2. But they took their eye off the ball a little bit against Manila Digger. They were already ahead 1-0, and that was snatched away from them in dramatic fashion. And that's the reason why they're looking to bounce back here against the defending champions. Meanwhile, we take a look at Park Yi Young and the rest of the gang. It's been a really bright start for them. 2-0 against United City, a statement victory against a fellow contender, which they followed up with an absolute battering of Agarelli United. It was previously the highest goal output that was just recently beaten by Stallion, but 12-0, a real message sent to the rest of the competitors in the PFL. Yeah, exactly. Kaya is here to win, and they're here to win it all, and they continue their uh, journey towards the championships today. And we're going to send you pitch side now where we're going to check in with Alex Lugman. Maharlika aims to give the defending champions a good fight. They plan on doing this by going aggressive on defense, taking note of the front three of Kaya. And of course, may sariling baon ang atake ang Maharlika. While for Coach Yu, his team, Kaya FC Iloilo, they have been performing so well so far. They plan on maintaining the momentum by going for good build-ups, by giving a high press first 5 to 10 minutes, and by watching out for the skillful veterans that Maharlika has. And a few changes with their roster from their goalkeeper, Walid, and right back. So folks, enjoy tuning in because the first half of this match is about to start.
Woody Menzi and Anton Del Rosario, the captains in this match. Man in the middle is Samuel Mendoza. He's going to be assisted by Reli Balila and Brian Buergo with Chris Mel Callabiab as the fourth official on the sideline. Anton Del Rosario, of course, with a history with this Kaya FC side. As the man who was a longtime servant for Kaya, and you're seeing the next generation now with the armband in Audi Menzi. Let's take a look at the starting 11, and the man to look out for is another Del Rosario, unrelated <laughs> uh, from my understanding, and Lucas Del Rosario has been making waves with his performances in the first two outings. He's going to be a man to watch today, but Anton Del Rosario, alongside David Bassa, a lot of experience in that back line. Exactly, and these are two people who will really be leading the Maharlika side and making sure that their de defense is locked in, that their defense is strong from the get-go. Now let's take a look at Kaya FC Iloilo, which is largely unchanged from their last outing, barring a couple uh, little spots here. We've got the goalkeeper, which is now back to Walid Biru, uh, replacing Kenry Balobo, and then you've got Marco Casambre slotting back into the lineup in place of Maridiano. Fitch Arboleda will start out on the right side and everything else remains the same for them. Javi Gayoso leading the line, Meliza and Komaki either side of him. And meanwhile, the defensive anchors or the midfield anchors in Park and Yamazaki. They've been spectacular so far to start the season. Exactly, and interesting to point out here, player Komaki has really earned his starting position and he is one player that Coach Yu has highlighted that uh, he will continue to perform and test himself against, with and against the best. So we'll see how things transpire here. Coach Yu Hoshide talking about pressing aggressively in the first five to ten minutes. Let's see if it comes to fruition here against Maharlika Tagig. We are underway. Harlika missing out on a, a maximum six points in their opening outings. Took care of business against Tuloy. Let it slip away against Manila Diggers. And meanwhile, Kaya have been perfect so far. 14 goals scored, nothing given away. And on top of that, they've been extremely impressive in the manner in which they've been scoring the goals, Cam. Yes, their goals have been with conviction. They really are showing the quality that they have. And when we look at the, the stacked lineup of Kaya, it's no surprise that they're, they have good performances because just the quality alone of the players can, is telling of the kind of training that they have you know, internally. Lots of competition, lots of good players, and really the best, create the best. Casambre cutting it back, Fitch Arboleda, and it's the opening goal! 
Eliza putting it into the back of the net, but an offside flag is raised on the far side. Did Melisa come back from an offside position? Assistant referee certainly seems to think so. But that was a warning signal if I ever saw one. Exactly, and even in his manner of trying to get there, I think the intent of Melisa really to just get on the ball shows. And when we look at his previous goal, parang ganun din, till the end, he's not stopping. Offside is a good call here. Just beyond the last man when that ball was hit by Fitch Arboleda. And Casambre had straight off. Chance to breathe here for Marharzi Katagig. What a start that would have been for Kaya FC. And uh, what Alex highlighted earlier was that the first five to ten minutes, though, sabi nga ni Coach Hugh, is the most important because you'd want to really, as Kaya FC, be the one to dictate the pace of the game, to really make an impact. And even if that goal wasn't counted, that is a good statement that they're making right now. In both games that they've played so far, they've scored very early on. Del Rosario. Getting it to Anton Del Rosario, who's there just a bit late. Still playing Anton Del Rosario. Commitment level is unquestionable. I think it's awesome that he uh, is booted up and that he's the one leading the charge from Harlika FC. And that the kind of experience that he brings into the team really is valuable. And I'm sure the young, his younger teammates have a lot to learn from him. 42 years of age now, Anton Del Rosario. He's taking good care of himself. Still able to compete with the young guns. He's yes. going to have quite a test today. And he's got Shuto Komaki and Marco Casambre down his flank. Eric Esso. Komaki now. And that square pass picked off. Melisa, this time definitely on side. Can he find a teammate? Just beyond Yamazaki. Don Rosario with a bit of space. It's off Komaki, it looked like. Oh, not quite seen there by the assistant. But it's a poor throw in. Maharlika looking to pounce. Chance here. Door just closed into the hands of Walid Biru. Playing across. Yamazaki has been a revelation so far for Kaya. Alongside that man, Park Yi Young. They've been able to control the midfield so effectively. And now they've got an outlet in Shuto Komaki on the left side as well. Into the box it goes! Gayoso with the opener. Within the opening five minutes, they've opened the door once more. Kaya FC Iloilo 1. Maharlika. Nil. Scored four in his last outing, Harvey Gayoso. He can't stop scoring at the moment. Exactly, and what a ball from Komaki. Really that huge run to switch the ball from uh, the defense line all the way to the left flank. His big run really paid off because he was able to, live, to deliver a good cross and Harvey was there to finish the job. Got in front of David Bassa. He's calling for it here. And he's directed that perfectly. I was just about to say, Jing, na first five minutes pa lang, very action-packed na. And just on the mark, that goal happened. And uh, we could say that Coach Yu's pl game plan of creating a good statement in the first five to ten minutes is well on its way. Certainly has. You can check that one off his list. High press. 
get a goal if possible. <laughs> check, check. And, and still 85 minutes of action. And very exciting to see how Maharlika will respond to this. And meanwhile, para naman sa kupunan ni uh, Armando Heria. They were very adamant about keeping things tight early on. And that part of the game plan has been thrown up into the air. Rooted to the spot was Mamadou Senet. Not much he could have done there. And under pressure right away. Knocked on. Trying to set his teammate free on the far side, and he does. Junior Mali. Arboleda under pressure. He's going to give up a corner kick. I think that was a sight to see just when the ball transitioned into their half. You could see if we were able to replay right now all. 8, 10 Kaya players head down, recovering, being as a unit. And I think that kind of mindset is just telling of how Kaya wants to play for this game, but obviously in the next few games to come as well. Corner kick, the first of the match for Maharlik up. Can they make something of this? Del Rosario's delivery. It's a deep one. Anton Del Rosario gets it back into the danger zone. And that shot was blocked by Akito Saito. Back into the mix. Parky Young away. Attack still alive here for Tagig. Lucas Del Rosario to the far post. And that one just wide of the target. David Bassa looking to return the favor. I think Marco Casambra did a good job there, making sure that he's denying the, the header for his opponent. And, um, Thankfully, now we are starting with a goal kick for Kai FC. The twins colliding there. Marco Casambre, I used to joke, was just a younger version of David Bassa. <laughs> well, that's what you do when you have impact on the younger <laughs> generation, maybe some way, somehow. Yamazaki. Kayoso has stayed on side. Looking to switch it into the path of Melisa. Kept in. It's a good ball forward. Basana giving chase. Akito Saito. There to close the door. Just about kept it in play as well. In transition, Maharlika looking extremely dangerous. Yamazaki looking to release Harvey Gayoso. Offside. I think Maharlika right now is doing a good job of staying compact. They're pushing the line up and they're trying not to get too stretched because when you're against a a quality side like Kaya FC, you wouldn't want to give them a lot of space. Gusto mo compact lang kayo, malapit lang kayo sa isa't isa, and you use the offside uh, rule to your advantage. It's going to be an interesting challenge here for Harvey Gayoso, of course, has a lot of pace to burn. He's up against a strong back line here in Maharlika. Up against uh, Usman Jeng there, who is from the Gambia, in, from Africa. Usman Jeng actually is one of the key players that they rely, uh, Maharlika FC is relying. You know, he, his firepower, his presence, and it's interesting to see how he will perform against a side, uh, a defensive side like Kaya. We're seeing Ultras Kaya. In attendance tonight, even without the 
the big numbers there, able to put on a, uh, a nice atmosphere here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. And really, that's uh, what Kaya is able to grow throughout the years, the yung, yung spirit of community. And it's really, really heartwarming to see people show up, group games, big games. Ito yung maganda eh. Kaya uh, it's no wonder also that the boys are inspired to keep performing because they know that they're doing it for their community as well. And meanwhile, Maharlika starting to get themselves into this game. Weather the 10 minute storm, so to speak. They're starting to get on the ball more often now. Use this body well to fend off Saito, Gail Basana. Just getting it out of danger. Gayoso. He's got two to go up against. He's found room. Harvey Gayoso pulling the trigger. He's hurt himself in the process there. Tackle from Jeng. Really, if I'm a Harlika FC, I wouldn't want to give a striker like Harvey Gayoso any space because he really, just a small inch of space, he can finish, he can deliver. And if you look at this moment, three, three V1 sha, and with another teammate going to support, but really, for him to still have the ball after being pressed that way just shows his skill. Just a different level of pace here, Harvey Gayoso. Standing leg perhaps took a bit of contact, but not enough. One in the middle. Esso. Lovely piece of work there. Allowed to run. Arboleda happy to let it do so. Kaya now finding room on the right side. Esso. Who does he choose? Gayoso. Back to Eric Esso. He's got Janjan -Jan Meliza. Straight into the palms of Mamadou Sene. Really, till the last moment, ang daming options ni, uh, ni Kaya FC. And for them to to show their composure till the last moment just says just tells a lot about their character as a team. They've given it straight back here. Not what you want to do against a confident Kaya side and it's been spilled. Komaki is offside. Komaki really is stepping up to the plate. Ito na sinasabi ni Coach Yu na baka may maibibigay siya and he is showing that he is earning his spot in the team right now. First an assist and now an attempt on goal. And I'm confident to see him continuing this kind of performance for the rest of the match. Wow. How tight was that offside? Exactly. And for me, those are my favorite kinds of goals. Eh, yung mga rebound. Mm. Diba? Kasi may kita mo yung mindset ng player na hindi talaga siya tumitigal hanggang dulo. The warning shot. Lovely touch from Yamazaki to bring that down. Sambre on the overlap. This ball into the box is a deep one. It goes all the way over. Arboleda in support. Meliza. So many players up for Kaya. Saito going quickly. Got some backspin on it. Enough for Yamazaki to control. 
Gayoso in support. Sending it into the box. Melisa gets a touch. Every time they venture forward, it looks dangerous, Cam. Yes, exactly. And what Kaya has been doing right as they're throwing numbers up, we see their wing backs in Arboleda and Casambre being involved in the attack. And as we see now, the, the game is evolving in modern day football. Sunod sa trend ang Kaya FC na very attacking football and everyone's involved. Doesn't matter if you're a defender, doesn't matter if you're an attacker, everyone as a unit is working together. And played out nicely here by the defending champions. Just look at the pace on Esso trying to get on the ball and those are the kinds of runs that make break lines. Sayo got a touch. Gayoso denied. Melisa. Second goal for Kaya FC. Iloilo, they've been relentless. And they forced the door open for the second time. Exactly, Jing. And as you said earlier, each time that Kaya FC attacks, it looks very threatening. And um, I could say that they are they have currently built to that moment uh, and many more moments to come for the rest of the match tonight. Gayoso, look at that for a challenge to keep him out. But then there was only so much they could do. It fell to Janjan -Jan Meliza and he made no mistake in the end. And a side that has been filled with talent, Dungeon Melisa has really carved out his own place in this team. Exactly. He is someone who has really grown through the Philippine football system. At nakaka proud na makita na nagde develop siya. Tapos ngayon, he's playing in the highest league in football and also among the best in Southeast Asia. What a response from Lucas Del Rosario! A spectacular finish! from the young man. Great technique to make it 2-1. We said he was a player to look out for, and look at this. Gets it on the right side. Nice little fake. Poof. Beautiful finish. First goal that Kaya has conceded in this league. It's game on now. Exactly. At the start of the game, the manager talk, uh, did say that Maharlika is here to compete. And when you talk about competing against the best, it's really responding in the best ways. And having gone down two goals in the first 20 minutes, this, I could say, is a good response for them. 24-year-old Lucas Del Rosario. Developed in the United States. He's now made his way to the Philippines. Melisa threading the needle. Park was on side. Cayoso looking to get it into the danger zone. And Komaki will hit that one in. Spilled by the goalkeeper in an instant response by Kaya. What a game this game has been turning out during really a plethora of goals. Just 20 minutes and we have had four goals in this match. Unbelievable. A goal fest just 20 minutes into the contest. Three from Kaya and a lovely one from Maharlika. Great through ball. Okay, also turning provider here. And it was spilled right into the path of Komaki, but still quick thinking. Wala kay Shuto Komaki just to loop it into the far corner. Exactly. And even as the play was developing, Mahita mo, nagirdeis na ng Hansi Komaki. Sha, gusto niya yung bola. And even in that moment, just the composure he did. 
to get the ball and get the ball in just shows that he does deserve to start and he does, does deserve to be here in Philippine football. A flurry of goals and we're seeing Mamadou Sene, Senegalese goalkeeper, needing a bit, bit of treatment here. Uh, certainly not his best moment, palming that into the path of an opposition attacker. But on the upside, nakita natin itong kakayanan ni uh, Lucas Del Rosario. There's been a lot of hype around his name, especially after his first two appearances. People wondering if his name should be thrown around in the mix <laughs> of national team call-ups and all of this. And I think the big question around his name was, could he produce his quality against the best teams? And as of the moment, where you could say there is no better team than Kaya FC Luilo. Exactly. And this is what the league is providing, right? The way you test yourselves against the best. And he has been testing himself against this really strong and relentless Kaya side. And in that moment, he showed who... A small picture of who he is as mm. a player. Getting close to the halfway point of our opening period. Uh, what has stood out to you the most, Cam, in this contest? Uh, that's a great question. A lot. Um, for Kai FC, just the way that they move the ball, the way that their movement has been dynamic throughout the past 25 minutes yeah. has really stood out. We get a chance here to enjoy three goals in four minutes. Oh, what a crazy game that we've had on our hands here. Uh, Kaya have been relentless. And this was the goal of uh, Meliza from the rebound or the second phase. Maharlika then went down the opposite end and were able to respond through Lucas Del Rosario and then Shuto Komaki wrapping things up. Shuto Komaki is proving to be a really well worth signing for KFC, having gone through a successful championship last year with, uh, with in his stint in Singapore. You know, he is showing that the past 20 minutes he's been working hard, but he has had an assist. That was my rebound goal, Sha, but now he has made a statement and really secured the goal for himself. A lot of great talent coming out of that Alberex Nagata program in Singapore. Um, Yamazaki, who is in midfield, also came out of that program for going abroad and playing. So it's good to see that uh, that talent has been spotted and has been brought over to Kaya FC Iluilo, who took a risk during the off-season, really rebuilt themselves. As we take a look at possession, in fact, Maharlika shading it here, 54 to 46. But possession doesn't win you games. Goals do. And Kai FC Iluilo are well on top in this match. Exactly. There are many factors in terms of how you perform and how you win games, right? Sorry, na patigil hung. And then pagka leave them ball ni Marco Casambredon, a cheeky move, something that. Um, experienced players are able to do just in terms of their game awareness. And just to build on my point earlier that what wins games, it's possession, but it's also experience, it's self-awareness, it's um, chemistry as well, which Kaya is sh showing that they have. What football here from Kaya. That deserved a goal. Spectacular stuff to move it from left to right to get into the danger zone here and to manufacture an opportunity that wasn't far away from defense to attack in a blink of an eye. Elisa going backwards. That play, that chance from Yamazaki started from that dummy from Marco Casambre. Exactly, and I remember, Coach, you did mention that the goal for this game is to improve their attacking. Look at this exchange, Yamazaki! He's gotten close again. 
And really, time and time again, you could see the way that Kaya attacks. It's with conviction. It's with really just the intent to want to beat teams. They are looking extremely fluid at the moment. They're enjoying themselves out there. Saito wins the header. Not often you see a goalkeeper wasting time when his team is down two goals. Not interested in getting this going quickly. I don't see uh, Mamadou Sane. Menzi trying to body Basana. He's done well. I go backwards to Anton Del Rosario. Looking for the pass inside, Victor and Koa. Away by Casambre. Na presenta. Okay, Komaki. And now they're under pressure, Maharlika. Meliza keeping possession somehow, some way. Meliza really showing his experience and his skill in that moment. Cayoso's ball spilled. And again, we saw Komaki there ready for the rebound. He is here to really make a statement, and I'm so excited to see how he continues to play on from here. Lovely work again from Kaya. Some relentlessness here from Janjan -Jan Meliza. I think what's standing out to me, Jing, right now is every time that they uh, recover the ball, Kaya FC, they're able to transition and produce an effective attack that has been uh, ending up with a shot on goal. Arboleda it certainly ha hasn't been possession for possession's sake. Uh, speaking of Iloilo Ilo here, everything they do has a cutting edge. Lovely stuff here from Kanikosa. Is this possessed? And now it's Komaki who's worn out. Can it cause his relentlessness paying off? It's a three on two. Can they take advantage? Del Rosario pushing wide. Runs into trouble, but he's found a way out. Flashing across goal, and Odi Menzi clears it away. It really has been an exciting 30 minutes, Jing. Really, Kaya showing uh, what they what they can do, but also at the same time, Maharlika trying to find a way to be as competitive as possible against the defending champions. When they break, they break with dangerous intent. Itong Maharlika Tagig. Ball recovered, but it's given away. And now, Kaya, we're looking to break free, but there's an injury dito. Uh, Maharlika. Sofian Puzaoui is in a bit of pain. Looks like he is going to be okay and able to continue. And play is back underway here. Park Yi Young. As his head up, switches it. And 
a great time to remind everybody that Star Polaris is the official match ball of the PFL. Kaya pinging that ball around with pace here. It's given away by Arboleda. They go all the way back to Sene. Into Anton del Rosario. Looking to go forward. Okay, to Saito is there. Got three up top here. Maharlik up. Komaki looking to turn. Threading that into the path of Goyoso. And Eric Esso. He took a deflection. It's going to be out for a corner kick. David Bassa ever committed. I think when you go against strikers like, like Esso, you can't give them space because just an inch of a space can result to a goal. And we almost saw that happen here in this moment. Bassa getting there just in time. I think on the follow through, he might have taken a shot to the leg. He's taking a moment to shake it off. And here comes a corner kick. I think it's interesting how Maharlika is setting up. They have three free players who are doing zonal marking and the rest of the players uh, man marking. And center, center to the zonal marking is Anton Del Rosario leading the defense. They deal with this threat. Arboleda able to meet the outlet. Bit unorthodox, but effective in the end from Mamadou Sene. Let's talk about that. Uh, chipped ball by Menzi, just finding his teammate on the run. And that was close for Maharlika FC. Flicked on. There Rosario reading the danger. It's on the stretch here against Shuto Komaki. Able to deal with it. up against a Garelli side where they were able to express themselves almost freely in that 12-0 win. This time they're meeting a bit more resistance with Maharlika. Maharlika FC coming into the game wanting to be as defensive and competitive as possible and maybe that's why the scoreline has been this tight for now. But really Kaya doing a good job just just continuing, just staying as a unit and working together. And in this moment, they just recovered as a team. And that's what you'd like to see. Miley creating the space on the left side. You said the transition was quick from the men in black. But Maharlika showing that they are not a team to be trifled with. If you fall asleep, they will get in behind. And it's play on here. Miley, can he find a teammate? It's falling for Kanikosa. Dilly Dally just a little too long. Long range effort. Not on target. Michael Joseph Kanikosa. Initial fake was good. You thought he'd pull the trigger there with the left foot, but perhaps didn't trust it. I think in moments like that, when you're a striker, you Everything happens so quick and you just need to really back yourself in the moment. And maybe that split second hesitation cost them uh, a goal that could have been. Signs of life here from the men in white. Five shots for the gig, nine for Ilo Ilo and Esso will add to that tally. Although it was a team effort.
Perhaps didn't trust his left foot either there. <laughs> Take a look at passes completed. 71 for Maharlika and 44 for Kaya. And that one's a fantastic statistic to put out to all the uh, those who are obsessed with numbers. You know, sometimes it doesn't tell the full story, Cam. You know, like passes completed where is, mm -hmm. a, is a good question to ask. And exactly. And what kind of passes are these? Are these negative passes where you just pass the ball back? Or mm. are these passes forward which cuts one, two, three lines? And just putting that statistics next to the scoreline just tells the story of this game that Kaya doesn't need a lot of passes in order to produce goals. And at the same time, Maharlika being more on the ball right now because they do want to stay competitive against a, res a, res a resilient Kaya side. Attempt there from Basa, not going to be an issue. Ball to chase here. Del Rosario is under pressure from Galloso, who's turned on the turbos here. Galloso. Eventually dealt with here by Maharlika. That's a great touch forward. And Koa. It's got Del Rosario. What can they make out of this break? On the overlap. Ball into the box. Komaki getting in the way. There's a player down. Not sure from what incident there. Missed the contact. It looks like it's Komaki. Shuto Komaki, who's needing a moment to recover. Don't think he's going to need any treatment, though. It seems like just a shock to his system. Needs a moment to breathe. Got hit in the neck, it looks like Shuto Komaki. Let's have a look. There he is. Oh. The arm of Victor and Koa, perhaps on the follow through. After they had made contact, you will see the arm, the elbow of Victor and Koa. See it here. Oops. Hello. <laughs> and it looked like it hurt. Still, still here, but he's, he's okay. Victor and Koa looks like he's in a different weight class, too, you know? <laughs> Much bigger fellow than Shuto Komaki. Mm -hmm. But here we go! Jesus believes it would have been offside, but always probing, always threatening, asking a question of this back line. Exactly, and what has stood out here is that every time Kaya FC takes a shot on goal, almost always it's been on target. And these kinds of shots have been threatening. And let's just talk about the, the technique to be able to flick that kind of paste ball into the goal. And also fair play to the linesman there. Assistant getting it spot on there. It wasn't easy. What a challenge from Akito Saito just to slow down that attempt to get in behind. They're looking so dangerous on the break, though. Gail Bassana, the Englishman, almost breaking free. Exactly. And uh, the coaches of Maharlika FC recognize that they will be defensive. Pero sabi nga ni ng pitch side reporter natin na si Alex na may baon sila sa attack and we are seeing uh, kung ano nga ba yung baon na to Yamazaki to shoot to Komaki what a goal from Kaya FC Iloilo spectacular stuff to make it 4-1 oh Intricate, incisive, a beautiful goal all around. Shuto Komaki with a brace now in this game. Let's have a look at it. 
One touch stuff. And then look at this from Yamazaki to set up. Shuto Komaki for a lovely finish. What a move. This is just top level stuff, Jing. Even with that layoff by Yamazaki. And finishing by Komaki. Really, no words. Ang ganda. Ito nga yung usapan in the matches that Kaya has been involved. It's not just the score lines, it's not just the wins. It's the manner in which they're scoring goals and penetrating. The way they keep possession, the way they find the spaces. It's honestly a rather scary for the opposition and everybody else in the league right now. Exactly, and when we talk about coming here to set the standard, Kaya FC is really doing that as defending champions, but also as uh, with the sight of international competition coming soon. They did play in the Champions League last year, found themselves against the absolute top clubs in Asia. And clearly that experience has left an impact. And somehow, with age, Janjan Meliza has added pace <laughs> to his game. Exactly. He's already fast to begin with, but he's, <laughs> he's extra fast in 2024. Uh-huh. And that's what you do. That's what happens when you are training with the best. You are pushed to be better, and uh, that's something that Coach you noted, na mas naging competitive daw sa training because, again, spots in the starting lineup and in, to get playing time has been more competitive. And honestly, it poses a good challenge or a good problem for a coach to make it harder for him to pick who to play, who are the best 11 to field um, per game. He's just celebrated his birthday, by the way. I don't see uh, Jan Jan Meliza. His birthday was yesterday. He's now 32 years of age. And as we said, he's added pace, even more pace to his game. Been a lot of talk about what the impact would be of having more foreigners in the lineups but from what stallions coach ernie nienes says and from what you just mentioned there the the standard in training has really increased and that has only served as a, a springboard for homegrown players as well to to step up their game yes exactly and that's what you would want. I mean, as a player, I'd want to be challenged. And when you train with the best, talagang you are forced to up your game. But at the same time, you are able to give yourself the opportunity to show who you are then. And I think Melisa, just in that moment, is showing why he is here and why he's one of the faces of homegrown talent here in the Philippines. Speaking of faces of homegrown talent, here's another one. Harvey Gayoso getting around. Anton Del Rosario! And he buries it! In some fashion, Harvey Gayoso, unstoppable. An incredible finish for the Kaya front man. Another goal for him after scoring four in his last outing. He's got two to his name already here. And look at the work. Just from start to finish, I think that goal has been spectacular with a left-footed lob pass from Casambre all the way cutting three different lines and uh, setting his teammate up, Harvey Gayoso, for a one-on-one -on -one versus the keeper. Really just spectacular work. He did well to find the room. He still had to bury it. There was a lot of work to be done there for Harvey Gayoso. And he made it look easy. Nice little grass cutter from Park Yi Young. Komaki looking to curl it. And he's been helped on. Whether that is an own goal or credited to Shuto Komaki, it doesn't matter. The lead has been extended by Kaya FC Luilo. A 
They are on a tear here, and they are showing no signs of slowing down. Look at this technique from Komaki. It looks like he was going to curl into that far corner, but the goalkeeper had it well read. However, that header from Jeng, that's a tough one. Now, in terms of technicalities, Cam, if it was heading on target, any sort of deflection that puts it into the goal, uh, it doesn't matter. It's not an own goal. But if it's off target and it gets deflected into goal, then it is an own goal. Mm. So we'll see how they award it. Exactly. They've given it to Shuto Komaki, it looks like. So they have judged that the initial attempt was on target. Will that be his third of the match then? A hat trick. A hat trick. In <laughs> halftime. Not a bad outing. I would say so as well. So Del Rosario brought down by Marco Casambre. Setting up here, Anton Del Rosario to take. Five to aim at. Del Rosario getting it back out wide. He's going to be offside there. Easy call. Two minutes that were added on have elapsed. You'd expect the halftime whistle to be blown at any moment by Samuel Mendoza. It looked like it was going to be a tight game, especially after Lucas Del Rosario responded for Maharlika. What looked like it was going to be a competitive affair has been blown wide open by the defending champions. And when we talk about response, ito yung response ni Kaya dun. So one goal conceded nila. And for Maharlika FC, a lot to learn from just this one half. And as they head into the second half, they would need to regroup and see how they continue on in the next 45 minutes. Message sent not just to Maharlika, but to the rest of the division here in the PFL. Shuto Komaki with a first half hat trick. Scoring half the goals for Kaya FC Iluilo, who've also enjoyed two from Harvey Gayoso and one from Janjan Jan Meliza. Lucas Del Rosario showed a glimmer of hope for Maharlika Tagig, but that's what it was ultimately just a little glimmer as uh, Kaya just looked relentless all throughout. Exactly. I think it really is the dynamic movement of Kaya that no matter who gets the ball, they are threatening on goal. And uh, even better, they have been supporting each other. Lagging my tao. Oh, this was a fantastic finish from Lucas Del Rosario. Showing his capability as a player on the right side of their attack. But look at this. This is the standard in which Kaya was playing at free-flowing stuff. Really not much can be said. Talagang pinakita ni Kaya na kung sino sila at kung ano ang Kaya nila. And that's how it stands. 6-1, the scoreline at the break. We've got statistics just around the corner and second half action. Don't go anywhere. national team play, the whole country is focused. Every grandmother, every child is proud when they hear the anthem and when the country come on the pitch. And for me, be part of such a national team representing a country is the highest as a coach, but also as a player you can achieve. 
I'm very proud to be Filipino. I've never looked back and regretted the decision that I made to play for the Philippines. I believe that me, along with many other names on the list, have progressed Filipino football, and, and I want to do that for as long as I can throughout the rest of my career. I'm an ambitious coach. When I go somewhere, I want to be the best. I want to achieve goals, and all the people around me have the same goal. And we want to go to the Asia Cup in 2027. That's the next edition in Saudi Arabia. We want to go there also with ambition, not only to be there, but also try to get past and the first round and to reach further and to show in Asia that we have the potential. You have to have a dream in life, not only in football. And if you have the dream, you have to work for it. You have to make your development. You have to live for that dream. You have to leave certain things and to achieve your goals. For me, my goal is to make a difference. May it be to inspire the new generation to do better um, with the results or to actually do something at the moment and give the country a win or even give them the best rankings that they could have. We have to be all humble and respect that we are representing the Philippines. I think you got to understand that you're not just playing for yourself, that you're playing for a whole country. I don't worry about the future, I, about when you talk passion, if you talk like all those things, they're good boys here. And as long as everybody understands that we're one family and the moment you're here, you got to fight for everyone, I think it'd be okay. When people write, me off or people write the team off. I want to prove them wrong and, and say that no, we can. And, I, and it's something I believe in. I think that's what it comes down to. If I didn't believe in this team, and the way they want to move forward, I, I wouldn't be here. That for me speaks a lot. That I want to prove everyone wrong, and I believe that this is this country, uh, this team, got a lot more to offer still. I expect the same from everyone else. All right, whether you're on the bench, whether you're the staff, whether you're in the starting lineup, we give everything tonight. We stick together no matter what, and same again. We leave the stadium with our heads held high. All right. All right. Yeah. I think sometimes the belief was not there. The Philippines has long taught from we are not a football nation compared to the neighbor countries. We are not the same standard. I think we have to stop that belief. We have to start believing that Philippines is a football nation with huge potential. We need to get sponsors on board. We need to get government on board. We need to get support of fans. And we need to believe that we can be competitive with every nation on the continent and that we also can achieve our goals on, on, on the highest level of football. Go out, play with your heart, play with your soul, play for the fans, believe in it, fight it for it and go out for it. Do it together guys, we can do it. Good luck, come on! Masara was incredible. I've in 12 years not experienced something like that. I don't think I've ever experienced playing with that, that big of a crowd. And there were 65,000 people there because they were supporting their national team. And it's, it's pretty much what any national team player would, would, would want is just to have the entire nation right behind you. Uh, supporting you and cheering you on. Football for me is the biggest sport in the world. Um, obviously I probably have a little bit of a bias towards it. I think Filipinos are developed and, and born to play football, I really do. If Philippines can play in the biggest sport in the world, because don't doubt, football is the only and biggest sport in international world. All over the world, people kick a ball, every child plays football, and has also a huge impact on the people of a country. You bring the people together, you united the country, uh, everyone is standing as one behind the team. We saw it already a little bit when our female national team was representative in the World Cup. If the men team can, uh, can achieve similar goals, I'm 100% sure it will have a huge impact on the population, economic-wise, political-wise, and also to unite the country. Believing in it, living the dream, and working very hard for the dream will be very important.
always try to put me down on the ground, but I made this beat jealous cause I'm the right in their minds. In their minds, you're a friendly boy, I'm the right in their minds. Come on, every boy, there's a fight in their minds. Half time between Kaya FC Iloilo and Mahalika Tagig at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. It's been a clinic from the defending champions. Komaki with a first half hat trick aided by a brace from Gayoso and a goal from Jesus Beliza. Lucas Del Rosario with a great finish for Maharlika Manila, but that was the only response they had to the six goals that Kaya FC Iluilo put their way. What a contest we've seen here and a lot of entertaining football that we've enjoyed on display. Exactly. It's been an exciting 45 minutes here with really a goal fest from both teams, but I think it has sta it is standing out now, the kind of level that Kaya is playing at. And at the same time, they're pushing Maharlika FC to be as competitive as possible with them. And it's time for us to check in now pitch side with Alex Lagman. Thanks, Jim and Cam. So I don't know about you, but that first half was an attack after attack, bomba after bomba. The beauty of this first half is that both teams were able to stay true to their initial plans. Kaya FC relentless with their pressure towards the Maharlika defense and Maharlika being able to delay the attack and even staining the Kaya FC Ilo, Ilo score sheet. So, dalawa lang ang tanong dyan. Una, pinagbigyan lang ba ng Kaya FC Ilo Ilo? O di kaya pangalawa, sindali lang, magpapakilala pa ata ang Maharlika. That's all on this end. Back to you, Cam and Jing. Thanks so much, Alex. And definitely we are going to find out if Maharlika Manila or Maharlika Tagig rather will have more in the tank and uh, have something in store here for Kaya or will it be more of the same? But we take a look at the statistics and you will be quite surprised to see that Maharlika have had more of the ball and they've had more passes completed, but that's not shown here. But the the, the shots and the shots on target definitely going one way more than the other. Exactly, and when we look at the shots on target uh, with Kaya FC Ilo and their conversion rate to six goals, they are standing out and they have been efficient and effective in goal scoring opportunities. And when we see here at uh, with the Maharlika Tagig FC, they too have been showing their effectivity in front of the goal with three shots on target and one of those being a goal. Six offsides for Kaya FC Iloilo, which also tells a bit of a story of how this game is being played. They're trying to utilize a high, higher line, Maharlika Manila, and uh, Kaya FC Iloilo has been testing it quite a bit. Now, on a few occasions, they've put the ball in the back of the net with an offside flag up, but they're willing to take that risk because a lot of the time it has paid off for them. Exactly, and when you get to the final third as a... As a team and as a player, it really is down to risk versus reward. And when you find yourselves in the final third, you would want to gamble it a little bit. And that's what Kaya has been doing. Na de bale na kung baka nag offside trap si Maharlika ta gig, pero they are going to risk it and it has been paying off for them. So obviously, the scoreline, the most impressive factor here para sa Kaya FC Ilo Ilo, they've scored six. But in this match, what has impressed you the most? Ah, uh, that's really good. Um, for me, it has... Uh, see, I have no words. <laughs> uh, for me, it is the quality that Kaya is playing, the way they move the ball, the quickness of their transition. And um, Coach, you did say that the first few moments when they regain the ball and have lost the ball is the most important to them, especially in this game. And Kaya has shown that, that when they win the ball, Agad, diba may pa defense, agad may, may intent to score. But also at the same time, when they lose the ball, their intent to recover as a player is there and also as a team. Okay, yeah, natin pa ulit ulit nakikita yung goal na to because it was just so filled with quality from one side to the other. The way they're able to cut through this Maharlika defense, so, so impressive. And it's using minimal touches, you know? You see there are three touches from Yamazaki, but that was just a lull. Anton Del Rosario to sleep so that he could put Shuto Komaki away there on the flank. The Japanese winger has been impressive in this game. And so has Harvey Gayoso. 
Here, Shuto Komaki getting his third of the match. Helped a large part there by Jing. But he's been very impressive today. Exactly, and ito na yung sinasabi ni Coach Yu na, na nandito siya to show something, and definitely this is more than something. He is here uh, to be uh, as competitive as possible and to really step up to the position that he is in right now. Lucas Del Rosario with another opportunity to impress in this half. Of course, we are powered by Eight Cuts Burgers. And in between matches and in between halves, we do highly recommend you go grab yourself some onion rings from Eight Cuts just by the entrance. Spectacular stuff. It's been our fuel today as we call these matches. And there's going to be a triple substitution for Maharlika Manila. They are in need of some changes. And uh, they are not holding back here at halftime. We're seeing Otoyemi enter the game. Abo as well, I think, yeah, is William entering Abo. the game. Just those two substitutes alone, I think is telling the story of how Maharlika wants the second half to go because they're subbing in one forward and one midfielder. And David Bassa has checked out. I believe Gail Bassana has made way as well. Kalikosa had it poked away. Meliza nicks in. Park Yi Young. Kumaki. Ball into the box. Bouncing around dangerously. And Jan Jan Miliza taking full advantage with a right footed finish. Lawrence Baggio making contact with Jan Jan Miliza there. It's a group party here for Kaya. That did not take long at all. Less than two minutes, and they're back on the score sheet. Again for Kaya FC, the first five to ten minutes of each half is so important to them. And again, they're starting the, the half strong with, uh, with a goal. Esso putting it into the path of Meliza. I think in those moments when you're a defender, you really can't make a mistake because you're so close to the goal. So the best option there from Harlika could have just been a clearance. I think that was the introduction of Raymond Abo into the game. First contribution, a difficult one. Lee Young spread that ball over to Harvey Gayoso. It's a difficult man to pin down Park Yi Young. He's able to switch the play with both left and right foot. Exactly, and the whole game he has been that steady grounding anchor for Kaya in the midfield, just being patient, just moving the ball from left to right. He is safe and he is their, really their grounding anchor and he has been effective in the midfield. In a, in a game where the spaces are closing as, as quickly as possible, Park Yi Young looks like he's got all the time in the world out there. <laughs> Exactly. Always, <laughs> always my teammates ka talagang ganon, uh, you, they're always finding the space, so they're always in pockets and tama ha. He makes it look easy. Getting past Saito. Chance here for Moharlika. Menzi. Covering well. Victor and Koa 
was probing. And Nokoa here in Maharlika for the previous games is really the offensive threat that they have. And it's no surprise that he found himself in front of the goal. And he is a player that Kaya needs to watch out for. Kanikosa looking to chest that one down. Two players going for it. Now Kaya venturing forward. Kanikosa nipping at his heels. Major na beaten and then yung switch of play. Pace of the passing is quick here from Kaya. And again, we see Cassambri uh, on top, uh, finding himself with an opportunity to contribute just there. And that's what we'd want, and that's the expectation right now for wing backs, where you get yourselves to be involved in attack. And, and really, it is a, stra a strategic move, because you add numbers on top, and you're basically the, the man that's not being marked, because it's so hard to mark you. Hindi mo alam kung saan galing tong player na to, pero nandun ka. Parky Young clipped. Much of the frustration of Maharlika. There's definitely contact there on Yi Young. And again, pinamumukha niyang simple lang. Yung laro, itong si Parky Young. It's a testament to his technique and capability out there in midfield where everything is so tight. Agree, and sometimes with players like that, you really just need to stop them in that moment. Parang binigyan na lang siya ni Maharlika para tigilan yung pag uh, flow ng game. The flag was up. Napaaga. Masyado itong si Eric Eso. It almost doesn't seem real. It's only been six minutes into this really? second half. Parang dami na nangyari. Uh -oh. Very action-packed. Already have a goal. We have a couple of set pieces. Del Rosario. Can he produce something here from the right side? Lost control of the ball momentarily. Able to salvage a throw in. Rolls harmlessly into the path of Biru. Lots of room here for Kaya to operate. Shuto Kumaki, he's got a runner in Esso. Gets it back. Definitely contact on Shuto Komaki, but they've played on. Eric Esso now is offside. I think that was unfortunate, Jing, because Kaya has been patient, passing the ball, looking composed, and... And unfortunately, it has ended with a player on the ground. Let's take a look at it here. Eric Esso just drifted a little early. Then you made me pay one. Okay, shoot up. That is going to be an aspect of the game that Shuto Komaki will have to adjust to. Philippine football known for his physicality. And also I think just with his performance, he will be a man to, to watch by other teams, you know, that hindi siya pwedeng bigyan ng space and... Uh, uh, 
And they'll be looking for inventive ways to keep him quiet. Exactly. Eliza finds Yamazaki in a pocket. Able to turn. He also was looking to peel away. Shutokomaki's got Kasambre on the outside. Utilizes him. Kasambre's ball! He went for goal! Marco Kasambre joins the scorer's list. <laughs> and what a finish from the left back. What a goal that was. Marco Kasambre has been working hard to get him to himself into positions. Uh, very up on the pitch. He has been looking to contribute with crosses, but in this moment, he contributed with a goal for his team. Lahat ata inaabangan yung pagka-cross ni Marco Casambre. Nobody expected him to go for goal himself. There is the space, Casambre. Rifles it through. Just the skill on that, that finish, I think, is telling that now, the quality of this kind of player, Marco Casambre. As that ball goes across, he's all alone here, Marco Casambre. And it's a good strike, good power. And when you're up against a goalkeeper who is tall and big, you, it's very difficult to be so low on the ground to save those uh, grass-cutting um, finishes. Parky Young, wide of the post there. Why not? Asali na nga si Marco Casambre. Sabi niya ako din. That would be a joy to see Parky on the score sheet as well with all of his contributions for this match. Eight goals. Already in this game for Kaya, and they are preparing a substitution. Mark Swainston going to enter the game. Robert Lopez Mendy being prepared as well. Harvey Gayoso. Shuto Komaki has been hit again, it seems. He's clutching his face. You wonder what the contact was. Samuel Mendoza did not hesitate. He saw both Christian Hamon and Sofian on top of the Japanese player. We'll see here. Hamon leaving it. He's been clipped on the shin, it looked like. That's got to hurt. And when you're a defender, you would need to be patient, especially when you're in and around the penalty box, because had that been a couple of inches forward, it would be a penalty shot against them. So Melisa giving way. With a brace. And it looks like Parky Young is going to be giving way as well. So, on papasok ngayon, Mark Swainston at si Robert Lopez Mendy. Substitution for Kaya FC, Ilino. Player number 20, EU Park, replaced by Mark Swainston. And what you have to look at here is, does the play improve or lose its quality here for Kaya with their substitutions? Into the back of the net, it goes on Imenzi, fires it all the way through. Just the quality and the pace of that hit, Jing, really, really is so exciting. And look at them here with the signature uh, goal scoring pose and well deserved as well for the captain. Oh, Imenzi put some venom in that shot. And there was an entire sea of bodies in front of goal, and it went right through all of them. Look at that. 
That'll be a great angle to see. That goalkeeper just misjudging it there. And really, there is no stopping that ball with the pace that he hit that with. Wakanda forever, boys. <laughs> Malaking tanong natin nung halftime is anong response ang makikita natin mula dito sa Maharlika Taguig. But the other question that needed to be asked was well, what would be the response of Kaya after going in with such a big advantage? Well, it seems they've certainly not lost their appetite here, Cam. Exactly, and they're they're letting their talking, they're letting their actions do the talking for them in terms of the response, right? After getting scored on, they have answered back with six, seven more goals, and that just shows the character of Kaya FC right now. And Kosa, it's a good recovery from Swainston to break up the attack. Sambre, oof. Cayoso has been clipped there. And playing on, says the referee. He had a good look at it as well, Samuel Mendoza. It looked a painful one. He looked like he got hit in midair, and hopefully, we get to see here. We see a closer look of how that hit transpired. And there was no oh. call on that. I was wrong. He was not hit midair, but rather his foot was planted on the ground and cleated in the calves. That drew no whistle. And you wonder why. Harvey Gayoso there taking a, a real shot from Hamon. He had his foot up. That was not a pretty sight to see. And somehow he's managed to get away from that unpunished exactly but encouraging here is the kaya community still pushing the boys on being that added energy for them and they've been at it the whole game just a little under 30 minutes to go in this contest i feel like a lot has happened during 30 minutes papala <laughs> Matagal pa and still so much action to go as Maharlika tries to string passes together and hopefully create a chance on goal for them. Star Polaris is the official match ball of the PFL. A little stoppage in play here so they can bring on some substitutes. We're going to see a change in goal for Maharlika Tagig. As Jay Mendez will be coming on in place of the Senegalese shot stopper Mamadou Sene. And Kanikosa will make way as well. He's been a real fighter out there on the pitch. MJ Libre. But he's going to be replaced by Dante Terando. It looks like Mamadou Sene is hurt enough to need a stretcher. Well, the substitution comes at the right time then with Mendez replacing him. Hasn't been the best of performances for Mamadou Sene. Had a spill earlier in the first half and that rifled through by uh, Audi Menzi, perhaps something he could have done, dealt with better. Yeah, I wonder what it was that has incapacitated him. 
And here we see the pass is completed, 162 from Maharlika, 140 for Kaya. Slight advantage for Maharlika. And I think just coming off of those statistics, we, it invites Maharlika FC to be more effective in making sure that those completed passes convert to an encouraging attack. And, and in the past 15 minutes, they have gotten themselves into the half of Kaya FC, but there really has been a lack of support in terms of supporting the, one, the, the ball carrier from Maharlika FC. We saw a quick statistic flash on our screens. 93% completion rate for Kaya. And they completed less passes, but the accuracy has been spectacular. 72% meanwhile from Maharlika. It's not bad, actually, but they've just come up against a team here that is, well, to put it simply, on fire. Yes, exactly. And for those who love their numbers, um, really the performance is telling a story that Kaya FC doesn't need a lot to be effective with 93% pass completion rate. It really says what kind of a team they are. Now Swainston dictating things in place of Park Yi Young. And here they come once more. They found a way through. And Saito has been bundled off the ball. Emphatically there. Samuel Mendoza will have a word. Victor Nkoa. Going to be talked to here by the referee. Let's have a look at it. Play through. Cut back. This was the moment. Nkoa just putting his body into uh, Akito Saito. I think in that moment he was trying to challenge the ball, but his contact was just too heavy and it really warrants a foul for itself. Yamazaki is close to finding a, a pocket of space. Trying to play quickly here, Kaya. Eric Esso. Yamazaki finding Eric Esso. Lopez Mendy off the post. How that stayed out, we do not know. <laughs> I think that whole play just started with Eric Esso on the ball, passing it to his teammate in the middle, give, a little give and go, and he found himself free. And really, when you are up against a player that's dynamic, you need to be careful. You need to watch where he's going because just a free space can punish you. A little bit behind Swainston. He's able to recover. Arboleda gets it back. A two-man game with Esso. Now Komaki switching that ball over to Gayoso in space. Mm. Corner kick denied. I think as a player, I really appreciate that kind of ball because it, it just tells the kind of skill that, that Komaki has in terms of his vision, finding the opposite side of the pitch to his teammate. Ang saya kalaro ng mga players na ganyan. <laughs> Esso, Arboleda. He's looking for the back heel to Komaki. Del Rosario playing it around Esso. Lovely bit of skill. Threading it. Two and Koa. He was asking a bit too much there. Dante Teranto. Thought he wasn't going to win that foot race. 
Swainston switching it to Gayoso. I think that play by Maharlika FC was very encouraging. It started with Lucas Del Rosario being patient on the wing, waiting for his teammates to be at the right position, finding them, but unfortunately, the play didn't transpire as they would have wanted. That ball played out. There's going to be a substitution now here for Kaya. Double change with Jovin Bedik going to be entering the match. And it's going to be a debut as well for Lee dok Young, the young Korean attacker. Yes, I believe Lee dok Young is coming off an injury and he is now healthy and looking to contribute to his team. And they're going to come on after this play. But aside from the blemish of conceding a goal to Lucas Del Rosario, otherwise it's been a very dominant performance here, given away by Mark Swainston. Can Maharlika take advantage here? Arboleda. Fouled. With the challenge for the ball. I think Arboleda the whole match has been working very hard there on the flanks, making sure that he's there with his defenders, but also at the same time trying to go and attack on the way on the wing side. And that's the end of the match for Shuto Komaki. He will be withdrawn alongside his fellow Japanese player Kaishu Yamazaki. In comes Jovin Medik in the debuting Lee Dokyo. Jovin Medik getting his first touch right away and linking up nicely with Marco Casambre. Looking for Robert Lopez Mendy. Good composure there by Maharlika to try and get himself out in the position. Lucas Del Rosario perhaps getting away with a push. And he's won the whistle here. Mark Swainston pleading his case that he'd been pushed pretty cleanly in the back. But Lucas Del Rosario showing he's not afraid of uh, the dirtier side of the game. Let's have a look at it here. Right here. Excuse me, sir. And he's been clipped there. Lopez Mendy getting it out wide. Harvey Gayoso in support. Jovan Bedik racing to provide extra numbers. Swainston getting Esso involved. Here comes the debutant. Looking to curl that into the far post. What a first contribution into the game. Cutting inside and getting a shot. Impressive how Kaya FC switched the ball from left to right and the right winger Doki going at the goal himself and very encouraging to see a player like him really test himself entering the PFL. Menzi getting a, a header into the box. Robert Lopez Mendy on the turn. If you just tuned into this game, 
be somewhat confused as to which team is which in terms of the urgency in which they're playing it. Really, they are playing at an intense, like an intense rate, and it's really, really refreshing to see how they are the ones setting the pace. Kahit na ahead sila, gusto nila na patuloy pa yung laban at hindi sila mag uh, mag stop, and that they won't stop just because they've already scored nine goals. Menzi. Lovely ball out wide. Jovin Bedik. Four players inside the box. There's always a desire to get into the danger zones here for Kaya. Lopez Mendy able to keep it in play. Menzi. Play on, says the referee. Robert getting to the end line. Running out of room there. Another substitution. Marwin Angeles coming on for Harvey Gayoso. Race for Harvey Gayoso in this match. A consistent outlet for them. The complete performance for Harvey Gayoso. Adonde Rosario presenting it directly to Eric Esso, who obliges. With a wonderful finish, bottom left corner. <laughs> he is back on the score sheet, the Ghanaian midfielder. And he's finished in style. Kaya back scoring in double digits. Didn't have to Still had so much work to do when this ball came to him. Look at that. Into the side netting, into the bottom corner. And noticeable there is that he was outside the box. So for him to find that angle and back himself really is so impressive, Jing. No hesitation. Eric Yes. Only one thing on his mind there. It speaks of... Simon, their confidence is sky high as of the moment with a lot of these players. And why not? They're playing some lovely stuff. And they're going to get their third win on the bounce. And what's standing out to me, Jing, is that each player seems to like want to score. Firing the intent is they all want to win. They all want to contribute. And it really is a sight to see how a team is one unit moving together and all wanting to contribute and make each other better. Swainston. Getting it out wide. Angel is getting involved. Lovely move here for Kaya. Del Rosario putting a stop to that. Del Rosario as well has been such a big, oh, big asset for Maharlik FC, making sure that the defense stays strong and he really is doing his best to keep the team in the game. A little too physical from Akito Saito. Putting a stop to that transition. Getting a lot of Dante Tirando. Knew what he was doing, really. Wasn't worried about giving away a free kick. 
the halfway line. Again, this is an added aspect of the game, no? Na football is a contact sport, and you would have to deal with uh, aggressive hits, just as what we saw earlier on. And you would have to come prepared. <laughs> There's going to be one particular group of individuals who will be interested in this contest. Want the gig? We'll be facing off against Kaya next week on the 27th of April. That's going to be one to watch. Want the gig also at the top of the standings, actually, initially before Stallions win. So they had gotten their third straight victory as well. Yes, and when we look at the roster of Want the gig, they do have some experienced players there. And, you know, it, when you put experience against each other, you come up with a very interesting matchup. So really excited to watch that one, Jing. What a precursor heading into that one. If you're looking for a confidence booster, couldn't ask for a better game for Kaya FC Luilo. Samuel Mendoza will be beginning yellow card dito. And he's been on the cusp. Itong uh, uh, player ng Maharlik na si Victor Nkoa, he's been frustrated and he's been lashing out as a result. And this one deserving of some extra attention from Samuel Mendoza. I think Victor Nakoa needs to be a little bit calmer because if he warrants another yellow card in the next 10 minutes, he will be uh, pulled from the playing because two yellow cards in one match warrants a red card. It wasn't actually too physical from him. It's perhaps just the intent and the frequency in which he's been fouling. has drawn the attention of Mr. Mendoza in the middle. Just a way to calm him down. Ten minutes to go. Ten on the board for Kaya. Maharlika. Their only consolation is that they're the first team to score against this Iloilo side. And Maharlika came in knowing that this was going to be a test. So it is a hard test defensive-wise, but I think they have a lot to be, uh, to be proud of in terms of how they're playing in their attack. They did, they, they did score against the defending champions, so I can imagine how they can use that positive to build on the next five, six, seven games for them. Certainly you can argue that if you can score against the defending champions, you can score against all the other teams. And the beauty of this year's competition is that there are 15 teams now. A far cry from the, free, the previous editions of the competition. And while there has been a discrepancy in quality in some of the, the teams, now we're going to get to see, you know, a, a real clear picture of who are the contenders and who will be uh, those that are in need of a lot more improvement. 20 shots in total for Kaya, just the five for Maharlika. 15 on target and three on target for Maharlika. Still on track in terms of their efficiency on goal with Kaya FC. But it appears to be a, a scuffle in the middle between the black and white teams. And Fitch Arboleda in the center of it. Both teams doing well to control their own players. And you can see they're doing their best to keep this from Bo boiling over. There's going to be a lot of discussions on the sidelines as to what transpired, but let's take a look at it here. Where was the flashpoint? Arboleda called for the foul. He's raised his arm to protect himself from Victor and Koa, but Nkoa responded as well. Was the arm up from Arbeleda warranted in the first place? 
And here come the cards. Victor Nkoa already with a yellow. He's going to get sent off here, and it's a straight red as well for his response. So it's a yellow card and a straight red for him. So he's off, and then there's a yellow card for Fitch Arboleda as well. I think all things considered, well officiated there by Samuel Mendoza and his team. Yes, I agree, and in football, when you get a straight red card, you are sent off the match, and you are left with only 10 people in the game. And of course, on top of that, you'll be suspended for the next match. And for a straight red, for seemingly violent conduct, you would, you would imagine. And you could wonder, you, you are free to speculate how many games he would be suspended. You'd be lucky if it's just one. Mm -hmm. But there is the possibility that it could be more. That's unfortunate for Victor and Cole because he showed signs of being an effective frontman for them. Yes, and he has been contributing to the team in the previous games. He was the goal scorer in one of their first few games, so very unfortunate, and it's a big blow to the roster of Maharlika FC for the coming games. And it's not an easy one that they have next. They have Cebu on deck. Itong, uh, Maharlika. Joven Bedik skipping past two, setting up Esso. Just a little short. What a piece of skill Bedik has, has shown just in that moment, beating two, three players. Bedik now. Eric Esso could very well pull the trigger here. He's looking to set up Lopez Mendy. Marvin Angeles, soft touch as always. Cycling it from right to left. Casambre with the ball inside. It's going to fall for Angeles. Robert Lopez Mendy now. Denied. What a clearance by Maharlika FC, putting his body on the line for them to save them a goal. And that would be. A Diano, oh, rather, Christian Hamon from Maharlika FC. Wrong number 12. <laughs> Pasensya na. <laughs> All into the box. Angeles getting it out wide. It's a good ball. Taking their time here. Been a few bright spots, not many. One of them has been Lucas Del Rosario, para dito sa Maharlika, the gig. Now, what can you say about the performance of the 24 year old? I think he's been very positive in attack, he's been patient, he's been. Showing his experience, honestly, Jing, na pag nasa kanya yung bola, hindi lang siya, hindi siya rash. He's not in a hurry to give away the ball because he knows the value of keeping it and making sure that uh, something comes out of uh, having the ball with him. Looking for room on the left side. Arboleda dealing with that. Menzi rifles it into Esso. Angeles. Getting forward. We're looking to add more here. Angeles. Shot from distance. Joven Bedik blazes it over. And just in that moment, the fluidity of Kaya's movement really has been highlighted again. And you know what what's really good is that we what we see are a shot on goal, pero the actions before it is telling of the kind of level that Kaya is playing at right now. Passing two, three shots on goal. 
They forced the turnover there, and Robert Lopez Mendy, you can imagine he wants that one back. It worked well to force the turnover. Again, good work from Lucas Del Rosario to keep possession here for the gig. Ball over the top. And he's quick off his line, Biru. I think Tirando also has been a bright spot for Maharlika FC. On the left wing, he has been initiating forward runs, trying to break Kaya's back line. And, you know, this is the, these are the kinds of habits that you would want in a player. And hopefully as he continues on, he gets to build on it and something comes out of his positive actions. There's a break on here for Maharlika. Three on four. Can they take advantage? He's straight offside. Little impatient there, Dante Tirando. Additional time, three minutes. Tatlong minuto na lang ang idadagdag dito. I think what's encouraging to see Jing is that even after 90 minutes, after 10 goals against them, Maharlika FC still wants to go and attack and be positive, try and score, and that's really just encouraging sight to see for them. Always going to be interesting to see how a team bounces back from a heavy defeat like this. It seems like they're already setting the platform for how they want to respond. There's certainly a lot of individuals you can see here from which they can build. Exactly, and I think a lot of learning. They did come into this game knowing this was a test, so lots of learning, definitely, attacking and defending. Of course, they got all three points against Tuloy. They struggled against Manila Digger, but it was a good contest. But this is a, a different level entirely. And you have to say it is also a good precursor for them as they prepare themselves for the team that finished second last year. And that's Dynamic Herb Cebu. That's another big test for them. And we'll see how they will, like what you said earlier, respond to this match. They're going to be traveling away as well, which is never easy. But they're going to be heading out there to play Cebu in front of their home crowd. And meanwhile, everybody's going to be looking forward to that blockbuster match between Tagig and Kaya, which will take place on Saturday next week. Every week, there's something exciting to look forward to in the PFL. Right, and we are on just the third weekend. <laughs> third weekend of the matches. Still a lot of action to go. So for those who are watching PF a PFL game for the first time, I hope this game has been enjoyable for you and that you continue to sport Philippine football. That's fantastic opportunities and opportunities to enjoy the game here live at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. Well, not just the matches, but like the environment, and the atmosphere. It's good food as well. I do encourage everybody to make their way over here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium and enjoy the action live. Last piece of action now. Kaya happy to take all three points here. Ten goals in the bag. And Samuel Mendoza is ready to blow the whistle. He's going to allow this one last attack to play out. Arboleda. 
picking his spot. Swainston plays it first time. And that is a way to safety. And that will draw the final whistle as Kaya FC Iloilo make a statement here against Maharlika Tagig. Making it three wins on the bounce and back to back games where they would hit double digits. It was a spectacular display of effective and beautiful football from the defending champions. Beautiful football indeed, Jing. The manner, the way, the manner and the way Kaya FC moved the ball and supported each other really looks very inspired and it's it's a standard that I believe sets the tone for the rest of the teams in the PFL. Mahalika Tekig put on a brave effort and kept it close as much as they could. But in the end, they were overpowered by the defending champions. And some of the football that we witnessed today, Cam, is truly sensational. I agree, and I, I believe if I was Maharlika FC, the first 20 minutes really is the biggest positive that they can take away from this game. They showed that they were competitive against the defending champions, but again, it is a matter of being able to beat these teams and continue on and stretch that level of competition for the whole 90 minutes. Kaya were able to utilize the depth of their bench as well today. And still were able to keep the scoring up. Marco Casambra getting involved as well from the left back position. The usual strong performances from Kaishu Yamazaki, Parky Young, Eric Esso doing well. Shuto Komaki with a hat trick today. So many superlatives that you could throw at a lot of individuals in this Kaya FC side. Exactly, and it really has been such an enjoyable match where it wasn't necessarily one-sided, but really the opponent in Maharlika has shown their fight. Na hanggang dulo, kahit down na sila ng 10 goals, 8 goals, 7 goals, they are choosing to continue to fight till the end and unfortunately they did find one of their players being sent off and it's, it will be a huge blow to their roster for the coming games but you know a lot to be proud of for this Maharlika side. So here we see the rundown, Lucas Del Rosario the only man to be able to score against Kaya FC Iloilo so far in 2024, a brace from Gayoso, a brace from Meliza, a hat-trick from Komaki and goals from Casambre, Menzi and Esso. And make it a 10-1 scoreline for Kaya FC Iloilo. And now we get to check in pitch side with Alex Lagman, who's got the moment man of the match. I'm with the moment man of the match, player number 14, Shuto Komaki of Kaya FC Iloilo. Congratulations, Shuto. Thank you very much. My question for you is, how do you think the team played in this game? Um, I'm very, very happy because um, today many goals and my got goal and assist. Okay. Thank you very much, Shuto. That's all on this end. Back to you, Cam and Jing. Thank you so much, Alex Lagman. He's a talkative fellow, Shuto Komaki. But he does his talking on the pitch. And three goals for him and another spectacular performance from the winger. And that means that Kaya FC Iloilo is tied on points at the top of the pile with Stallion Laguna, Kaya, and Wantagig all with nine points. That's a log jam at the top. And then you've got Cebu, United City, and Davao and Manila Digger, all with six points. So there's another log jam there in the middle of the standings. And it plays out the way it does for the bottom half. But it's getting exciting now here in the PFL. I agree. Teams are showing up. They are rising to the occasion. And as a fan of Philippine football, this is the kind of action that you'd want to see. Teams being competitive as possible. And... Uh, Today just really shows that. So much to look forward to next week in uh, the PFL. But for us here on this Sunday triple header, that's all the action that 
we can enjoy for one day. Three matches, lots of goals to speak of, and 10 in the end put through by Kaya FC Luilo against Maharlika Tagig. For my partner, Camille Rodriguez. For director, Glenn Charles Lopez. My name is Jing Hamlang. Thank you for watching. Good night. Oh.